All right. Um, well, thanks. Thanks for being here. I guess we'll probably have some people trickling in intermittently. Um, I'm here to tell you a bit about the Virgin Earth Challenge and what's going on there. And and uh, how many people have heard of the Virgin Earth Challenge? That's good. Good. That'll make my job a little easier. So. When we talk about carbon, sometimes it's really difficult for, for people to really put this into perspective and, and what does carbon mean, it's, what does CO2 look like, what, what are we really dealing with here? So, so I, I, I like to work visually and everyone knows what a, a tree looks like and everyone is familiar with wood. So looking at wood, looking at a, a telephone pole, that's roughly a ton of CO2. So half of a tree is carbon and cubic meter of wood contains about, about a quarter ton of carbon. So we're talking uh, when it burns and, and decomposes, this, this uh, tree emits about a ton of CO2. So when you scale that up, you, you look at this picture. This is quite a phenomenal picture. This is, this is from a lumber salvage operation in Sweden after a big hurricane. So all these trees blew down and the government of Sweden decided, well, we need to collect these trees and figure out something to do, but first they decided to stack them up. So what you're looking at is about a kilometer uh, long pile of wood. Um, what this picture represents is about a million tons of CO2. So putting that into the context of human CO2 emissions, every year humans emit eight gigatons of carbon. So that's about 32 billion tons of CO2, billion tons of CO2, so that's, that's quite a bit of wood, which is this picture times 32,000, so that's how much CO2 we emit every year through the combustion of fossil fuels. So putting that into perspective is a really, it's quite a phenomenal big, big picture we're looking at. So we've all heard the problems with climate change, I'm not going to go into that, it's obvious, we've, uh, we've got some compounded problems and we need to do something, so what do we do? Now, it's very clear that the increase in energy efficiency is, is pretty critical. There's, there's no way around doing that, but we need more than that. Energy efficiency is not going to actually grab out the carbon that's in the atmosphere and address the legacy carbon emissions that we've already put up there. So what are we going to do? So in 2007, Al Gore was really championing this conversation. What are we going to do? He was talking to business leaders all over the world. Uh, you guys have a problem, you're, you're contributing to the problem, what are you going to do about the problem? So he got to talking to Richard Branson and uh, told him this narrative, Car climate change is a problem, what are you going to do about it? And he was pretty bothered about this and has a couple sleepless nights on his <laughs> island, what, what are you going to do? And he, he <clears throat> So he got, he got to talking to his wife and, you know, honey, what, what are we going to do about, about climate change? And she's like, well, Richard... You know, maybe, maybe you can just pull carbon out of the air if, if, if carbon in the air is really a problem. Let's, let's just pull it out. He's like, oh, God, that's, that's actually quite a good idea. So uh, he decided, after a little bit of conversation internally and a few months later, let's, let's put up a prize. Let's put up a prize, $25 million science prize to the first team that can show that they have a, a pathway to a gigaton scale carbon negative solution. So kind of read, it's a demonstrable, scalable, credible, commercially viable system that can achieve long-term net removal of a significant amount of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere with no countervailing impacts. So that's kind of a loaded, it's like, wow, that's, what, what does that all mean? But that's, that's really hard, but basically we're talking a gigaton scale. So putting this back into the picture that we saw, that is a significant amount of carbon, that's this pile of wood 3,200, so 3,200 piles of this, this, this lumber. So where, where are we in the process? So Virgin went out, they, they've got these different stages, they have preliminary review, you can submit your plan, they'll look over it, they'll have a technical review of a smaller amount of people that they've shortlisted, and, and, and uh, where are we now? Uh-oh, that, okay, here we go. So here we are, so there were over 10,000 applicants and they whittled that down to about 2,600 credible submissions, about 100 in depth that they said, okay, well, this, you might be really onto something, let's do some technical review, and then they visited people and really started to understand the science, and then they announced 11. So they announced these 11 last October in, in, in Calgary. So 
the leading organizations. We've got Air Capture. I'll tell you a little bit about that. We have Biochar. We have Bex. We've got Enhanced Weathering, and then we have Land Management. So these are kind of the portfolio of, of Virgin Earth Challenge uh, shortlisted companies. So Air Capture. Air Capture is a really curious thing. There's quite a heavy representation of Air Capture in the Virgin Earth Challenge. Um, and they're all approaching things a little bit differently, and uh, some are further, further along than others. But Air Capture is basically uh, a big vacuum cleaner that sucks in air and strips out CO2 and, and, and solidifies it or keeps it in a liquid phase and then uses that CO2 to do some work, maybe, maybe create liquid fuels maybe inject into the ground for enhanced oil recovery, maybe to make plastics, maybe to make some other things. But basically it's a big uh, filter for carbon in the air um, and they're really focusing on that. So Bex, basically what Bex is, is uh, a biomass fired power plant that has carbon, uh, carbon capture system on the back end of it to inject the CO2 back into the ground. So that's another a novel idea, and there's one, one guy in there um, uh, that's doing that, and they're, they're actually quite far along. They've got about 300,000 tons of, of annual BEX sequestration a year at a, at a pilot facility, so they're, they're actually doing some things at scale. Then another concept is this enhanced weathering. So there's some stones that, uh, olivine primarily, if you crush up olivine, um, expose it to CO2 and water, it'll actually fix carbon and calcium carbonate and bring that out of the air and, and create a solid. So this is a natural geologic process. They're just really working to speed this up. So their concept is, well, we can find some ways to sustainably mine olivine and crush it up into a fine sand and then spread it out and we might actually have something. So uh, they're, they're a really interesting group um, out, out, of, out of the Netherlands and, and they're doing some, some interesting things. And then there's uh, land management. So the Savory Institute uh, basically is, is motivating, motivating cows to, to move through paddocks a little quicker and, and uh, improve the, 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 the grassland uh, ecosystem and, and viability and, and really sequester carbon uh, in the soil and improve fertility. So, so they've, they've worked for about 40 years on this concept and they're quite far along and they're doing some really interesting work and it's something to definitely consider as a viable, viable option. And then you have biochar. There are three biochar companies that are, that are on this short list, and two of them are here. I'm here, and uh, David from Full Circle is here. And um, we think that this is really great for the biochar industry because, one, we, we think the biochar industry is, is further along commercially than anyone else on the list, and it's, it's quite a sense of pride to have some representation here and to have that exposure and to really think, okay, well, there's some validation. People are actually listening to what it is we're saying, and they think that there is a viable pathway potentially to a gigaton scale uh, solution. So this, we should all be pretty excited about this. Um, it's a testament to, to the whole industry, really. We're just the three representatives that are in the room talking about this. So um, we need to think about ways to leverage that. So let's just look at some technology platforms. And bi biochar is pretty unique. Um, you've got different things going on, everything from a stove to a larger scale electric production, liquid fuel production, but basically what you can look at is, you know, you're going to need a lot of stoves. Uh, you're going to need a lot of pieces of equipment distributed out there and assurances across this whole supply chain that these things are happening. I mean, this is a big idea, a gigaton of carbon. And this isn't a gigaton of CO2, this is a gigaton of carbon. So that makes it 3.67 times harder. But um, this is, this is a big challenge for us. We've got some, some work ahead of us. So who in the room can think, thinks that they can actually do this alone? We got a couple. Good. All right. I, I love that. It's ambitious. I'm, I'm excited. I'd love to, uh, to talk to you more about the, the specifics of that. Uh, so how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? So really the only way we can actually get there is an industry, and this is an industry that is moving forward. This is not one company in the Virgin or Challenge moving forward. We're all doing things pragmatically and making things happen. But we need simultaneous parallel innovation, collaboration, and partnerships to make sense. We've got to make this thing happen if we want to scale today. We have to do that. And there's a couple things that are really important. We need refined products with defined uses. 
We have to show that these materials that we're producing can actually do something specific so that someone will buy that as a service and not necessarily just as a raw commodity. We have to incentivize them to actually do this through refined products. We need energy generation. There's no way around this if we're just making charcoal. We need to somehow really monetize that energy. We need to design these supply chains around these biochar systems to really take into account the life cycle carbon assessment. I mean, everyone's aware of this, but we actually need that as a decision-making tool at the process, and we need to think about that if we actually want to reach a gigaton. And we can't wait. We gotta do it now, so we gotta work together. We gotta figure this thing out. And we, taking it from Google, we can't do any harm. Uh, we've, we've done harm for a long time. We really need to focus on some, some tangible things, some tangible solutions, and we need to make that concerted effort to actually create some sustainable solutions. So really what I see the Virgin Earth Challenge, it really is this grandest of challenges, and it's not just an engineering challenge. It's not like, well, let's get to the moon, you know. It's, we can design and engineer our way to the moon or across the Atlantic. This is more than just an engineering problem. This is a, a cascading of, of different social, economic, environmental engineering problems simultaneously to get to that scale. So it asks some really fundamental social questions that we have to actually confront and address. So can we actually close the carbon loop? Can we actually do that? Can we actually heal the environment? Are we gonna do that? Can we work fast enough? And most importantly, can we actually work together in this, in this thing? So that's my talk. Excited to talk to anyone else about uh, collaboration. We got some really things, interesting and, and exciting things going on in biocharge solutions, really making a lot of pragmatic process, progress, building markets, getting materials out there, building equipment, learning, making custom equipment, doing reclamation, learning by doing. Uh, so anyone else who wants to work with us by doing, Excited to have that talk. Thanks.